Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 86 on Now You Know. So for those of you who have noticed uh, the past two weeks, um, we have been in this new space, this new room. That has allowed us to spend a lot more time uh, filming and recording because we don't have to break everything down and set everything back up every week, which means that we have more stories that we're able to record every week, more stories that are going to be able to make it onto Tesla Time News itself. And so because our patrons have made that possible, um, we're going to be moving all of those stories onto our Patreon bonus stories because, you know, we really couldn't have done it without you. So that's a big thank you to our patrons. And so without any further ado, let's get into some news. All right. We've got our two reporters in the field. They're a little cold, I think. They're up there at the uh, Ice Hotel in uh, the Arctic Circle. Yep. Take it away, guys. Hey, so uh, we're in Sweden. So let's cover a Swedish story. Yeah, but you know, it's kind of cold in here. Could you start a fire first? Yeah, sure. You can start it like that? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh-huh. I've never seen anyone do it like that before. I... Oh, Whoa! There it is. It worked! Yeah, of course. All right. Um, no, you're good. So, what... Uh, electric trucks. Sweden... Uh, Volvo. Well, well, you're right. We're in Sweden, and Volvo Trucks just announced their first electric urban truck. This is a 16-ton truck, so it's meant for urban environments, doing things like recycle hauling, uh, garbage hauling, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's got a range of up to 300 kilometers. That's with its biggest battery. We're talking a 300 kilowatt hour battery. Wow. You can also get it with smaller batteries, like 100 or 200. So it depends on what your use is. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is that Volvo announced that they're trying to come up with a whole line of electric trucks. So this is just a, kind of their first shot into electric trucks, which means they're probably going to go for bigger semi-trucks eventually. Here's a quote from the president of Volvo Trucks. Clace Nielsen. We're immensely proud to present the first in a range of fully electrically powered Volvo trucks ready for regular traffic. With this model, we are making it possible for cities that aim for sustainable urban development to benefit from the advantages of electrified truck transports. Another cool thing about this truck, Jesse, is that it's got fast DC charging. So it charges at about the same speed as a Tesla does, and you can charge it up to from zero to pretty much full in about two hours. Wow. Now you can also plug it in overnight, and it takes about 10 hours if you do it kind of the regular 22 kilowatt way. I mean, 22 kilowatts is still a lot, let's be real, but obviously it's a huge battery. So right. I, I think that this is a, a great development. I think that lots of cities are gonna benefit from this, not just in you know their their climate change initiatives, but in their air quality and, and sound pollution. I mean, it's, it's going to make a huge impact. And when people start um, seeing and not hearing these trucks, I think, people are going to start to take notice. Yeah, and don't forget that electric trucks have a lot less maintenance. So when you're using an electric truck, you don't have to replace all the same parts that you do on an ice truck. Right. So who's going to be using these trucks? Well, there's going to be two companies using them in the beginning because uh, there's only going to be two trucks in the beginning. Renova is a recycling company and TGM is a trash hauling company. And they're going to be testing out the trucks. Nice. So uh, a quiet and a little bit less smelly uh, trash truck. That is awesome. I mean, this shows that there is a shift happening. Yes. I mean, you know, Nikola One, of course, with their, their hydrogen fuel cell truck, then Tesla with, with the, the, you know, Tesla truck. Yep, don't forget uh, Mercedes, yep. uh, Mitsubishi. Yeah, they're all getting into the electric truck market. I think that's fantastic. Exciting. So Jesse, our next story is about Xiaoping Motors in China. Yeah, I remember them. They had the sort of Model X looking clone with, you know, great, great stats and stuff like that. Yeah, I think we've, we've covered that a while ago. We don't need to dive into it anymore, right? Uh, well, actually, the big story here is that they just received a massive amount of funding, $2.7 billion in funding from Foxconn and Alibaba. Wow, I mean, that is nothing to shake a stick at, as I must say. <laughs> you are right. It's not nothing to shake a stick at. Uh huh. Um, and with that kind of money, it looks like the car is really going to be coming out, which is, is exciting because we could be looking at another Model X-like car for a lot less money. That's sweet. I mean, I can't wait to see some of these Chinese cars rolling off the uh, production line. I can't wait to eat my marshmallow. <laughs> it's not a marshmallow. <laughs> I can't wait to eat my ice ball stick. They look so familiar. I don't know where I've seen them yeah. before. Sweden? Did we meet someone like that looked like that in Maybe. Sweden? Maybe. Northern Sweden? Must have been. So we've seen a lot of different electric scooters uh, oh, yeah. throughout our shows. This one, I think, I have to say is the Tesla of electric scooters. Why do you say that? Well, 
there's first of all just a lot of technology and 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 screen stuff a lot of cool phone map kind of things on it and also this thing folds up so definitely good for uh you know people who live in cities and stuff like that and you can remove the battery pack yeah it's like a rolling cart that you can bring into your house or your business and charge it up i guess it takes two hours to charge it to full Mm -hmm. um there's two models you can get the one with the 45 mile range or the 93 mile range and that's a lot of range for a scooter especially if you're driving around a city Right. It weighs just under 95 pounds or 43 kilograms. Its top speed is electronically limited to 28 miles an hour. So it's it's definitely not a highway scooter, um, but it definitely is a, a getting around town kind of thing. I, I think to me, like you could bring this onto a subway because it, it folds up and rolls while it's folded up. Right. So it, it takes up so much less space. Um, it's a little pricey. I think that's another reason why we might be calling it the Tesla of scooters because, uh, you know, it's, it's $8,900 to $9,900, depending on the battery size that you want. Right. Um, there's those two battery options. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I kind of thought was cool about this is check, take a look at the motor. It's not a typical motor situation. This, the motor is built into the wheel and I think the suspension is built in there too. So it's supposed to offer a really nice ride. Yeah. I mean, overall, I'm just, I'm pretty excited to see you know, so many uh, options when it comes to electric uh, two-wheel travel, but it's, it's also really cool to see such a neat design. I mean, it's uh, asymmetrical um, from the front, so you get this really funky looking design, which uh, functions in the way that it folds up. I think, I don't know, really neat. Yeah, they're spokeless orbital wheels. They have a four kilowatt electric motor that's integrated into the rear wheel, providing 90 Newton meters of torque, which is quite a bit for a small bike. Um, And then the two ball tires incorporate carbon nanotubes, which UJet claims can double the handling performance of the tires in all weather conditions. That pretty cool and then you add that to the onboard camera that can record your rides so you can it acts as like a dash cam or later you can show your friends the rides Mm -hmm. you just took Um, and then you can unlock your your uh, bike from your phone you can do all sorts of things from your phone like anti-theft protection and and tamper protection so i mean this bike is it's got 20 sensors on it i mean i i just can't wait to check this bike out yeah i think it's super advanced and i'm super excited to uh to hear about people who are using these in the wild. So this is the JAC Volkswagen Soul E20X. So to parse that a bit, JAC is a Chinese brand. They have Mm -hmm. partnered with Volkswagen in China. They've released this SUV, which is kind of a refresh of GAC's IEV 7S. Now let's parse that. Okay, so that's a lot of numbers and letters and words. Um, But basically what we're talking about here is a battery electric SUV for the Chinese market. And the thing that jumps out right away is that after incentives, this car will cost $19,000. Yeah. Which is exciting because that is a pretty well-priced um, EV. So for that price, um, you're going to get a reported range of 300 kilometers, um, but the expected range is more like 200 kilometers. So that's about 125 miles. So, so it's, that's it's not a Tesla you know, range. It's it's definitely more in the, the leaf category in terms of range. The the interesting part also is that the JAC IEV 7S costs just about the same as the uh, JAC Volkswagen Soul E20X. Yeah, I think what happened here was that Volkswagen partnered with JAC and they're like, okay, well, let's refresh your IEV 7S with a Euro fascia look mm-hmm. and basically keep the guts the same. Right, because I mean, to me, they look like identical cars, practically. I mean, there's not much of a difference. I think that the biggest difference is in the style. It, it's got more of a, a Euro finish. Looking at the interior of the IEV 7S really struck me, especially the, the front console. Oh yeah, as soon as you saw this right here of the electronic front console, you were like, that's my leaf. That's my leaf. That is, those two bars on either side is is the exact same screen that I see on my leaf. Well, we all know that Chinese manufacturers are very good at re-engineering. They just take apart an existing car, so they probably looked at the leaf very closely, and they just said, hey, why reinvent the wheel here? Or they're just buying the same parts. They Or, yeah, So, I mean, to me, this is just a leaf SUV. Mm -hmm. Um... It's got a, a slightly bigger battery than, say, my Leaf. It's pretty close to what the the new, you know, refresh Leaf is in terms of battery size. Um, zero to sixty in eleven seconds. That sounds very familiar to my Leaf. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, this thing is is just a, a Leaf 
as an SUV, the, slightly bigger. The big part, the takeaway from this story that I took away mm-hmm. is that uh, $13,000 of the price gets taken off by Chinese incentives. So federal, state, and local incentives. So the Chinese government really wants you to be driving an EV if you live in China. Right. Um, and when you compare, let's look at the price of gas in China. So right now, as of today, the price of gas is on average $4.36 a gallon. And for our uh, European viewers, this is what it is in euros to liters. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can see there that that's, I don't know, a lot more expensive than American gas right now. That's like right. 50% more. And then let's look at the electricity costs of Chinese electricity. Right. Eight cents a kilowatt hour on average. That is dirt cheap. Yeah, that's like the cheapest state in America that you can find electricity. That's right. that's about more than, I'd say, so the average price in the U.S. is about 13 and a half cents. So mm-hmm. we're talking again about 50% cheaper electricity. So you're looking at 50% cheaper electricity, 50% more expensive gas in China. So, right. so the, driving EV is smart, r- really smart. Right. So in a similar vein to what we were just talking about, um, this story is about another German auto manufacturer um, partnering with a Chinese manufacturer um, and bringing a fully electric SUV to the Chinese market. This is the iX3 SUV, and we didn't report on it last week because all they dis- all they showed last week was the front grille, and that to us was not exciting right. enough. But we do have some pictures now. And this is quite a bit different than the car that we just covered, the Soul. This one has a range of 250 miles and 150 kilowatt capacity for charging. So okay. this is, to me, is a lot more exciting a car because you have a, a usable range, um, and a usable charging speed. Uh, I'm not as excited. I mean, I know that you're excited because of the charging maybe and stuff in the range, but uh, it's not coming out till at least 2020 that we know of. That's true. We don't know the price, so it's probably going to be expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's only going to come out in China first because it's with the Chinese venture. It's BMW Brilliance, which is their joint venture. Um, and I got to say, they might be kicking themselves right now that they that all these German car companies, American car companies partnered with Chinese car companies. Because as we just saw last week, China has just said that Tesla and others can open without having to do a joint venture. So that means they partnered kind of for no reason. True. That is definitely true. But I mean, to me, I care more about the car. I care more about it's got... 200 kilowatt motors, uh, putting out around 270 horsepower. Um, it's got a 70 kilowatt hour battery, which should get it somewhere in the realm of 250 mile range. And again, that charging rate of 150 kilowatts. Now, I don't know exactly what the charging infrastructure in China is like. Um, it totally depends on... There's a lot of superchargers. There are a lot of superchargers. And the smart idea to me would be work with Tesla, at least in China, where you... Uh, you know, it seems like all of these car manufacturers need to pour resources into creating electric infrastructure. Just work with Tesla in China, leverage their uh, supercharger network, you know, help expand it or whatever. Just because, you know, if you're going to make cars that have a similar uh, charge rate, you may as well take advantage of something that's already built. Um, since this is a area where other car manufacturers have not even touched. Um, again, there's no price. So that of course, is is kind of a a downer to me um, that we don't have any idea of what it's going to cost. It's definitely going to be more expensive than the Soul um, because you're getting a real range. I don't like how it looks. Sorry. To me, it looks just like any other BMW SUV on the road. So, I mean, a lot of people like the look of of that. So I think that that's going to be a pretty easy sell for a lot of people. Maybe you don't quite see it the same way. So I guess this got leaked, or maybe it was intentionally leaked, but this is the VW ID Neo. Um, And this expected price range is going to be about 25,000 euros or $30,000. And it has a reported range of 400 to 600 kilometers, depending on the battery packs. That's 250 to 375 miles. That's not shabby. Well, keep in mind that this is the NEDC uh, rated range and oh, they right. are that's i yeah. don't know what conditions they test in they must do it on the moon or something because they usually get highly inflated range okay. so we're looking probably something lower than the model three range when we're all said and done at least for the for the base model would be my guess gotcha um pitting the the bases against each other so i want to talk about the car yeah so the concept you're seeing on one side of the screen that was released last year and then mm-hmm. you're now seeing the production photo we don't or yeah. or whatever it is right um what does this look like to you I mean, so a couple weeks ago, we talked about the Kona, and it uh, Kona again it hit me. I was like, "Well, um, it was boring looking, right? It looked like any other car. This to me looks like no other car you've seen before, and I feel like that's kind of an issue when you're bringing it to consumers because consumers, 
um, you kind of want a car that doesn't stand out too much, hmm. which is why a lot of people have cars that don't stand out too much. Interesting. Um, otherwise, we would do things to our cars to make them stand out. I mean, I think that there's kind of... Uh, but don't you think there's a large segment of people... I mean, remember, you're too young to remember the Saturn. Like, that was a different car company and a different look. And I feel like there's a segment of the population that wants their car to be different. That's why Scions do well and the Honda Element did well. And, I, you know what I, mean? I agree, but I feel like it's not... You know, you have to draw a Venn diagram between the people who want a weird looking car and the people who care about the environment and want an electric car. But this isn't weird looking. It's different looking enough to the point where I think that a lot of people might be turned away just by the sheer look of it. Do you think that big rectangular scoop in the front, like that air scoop is what's doing it for you? Or? No, it's it's really how blunt the front nose is to me. Well, oh, okay. I mean, it's, it's the look. To me, the things I don't like are the big blunt front nose. It seems like that is going to be... Uh, inefficient. I mean, I wasn't in the, the the wind tunnel when they were testing it. So, I mean, what do I know? But it, I mean, to me, it doesn't look that aerodynamic. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it being as, as a car, you know, $30,000, if that is what it truly costs when it comes out. I, I don't know. The, the look of it, to me, I mean, the concept didn't really make me go, wow. And this certainly doesn't make me any happier. I like the e-golf. I've always liked the look of it, so it's. I mean, this. I know this is like a takeoff of the e-golf, but I kind of would have st stuck with that look, because a lot of people like that look. Yeah, I would have really stuck with that look as well. I mean, just double down on it. People yeah. like it. Um, and yeah, just and refine people, it some more. People like e-golfs because they can get parts that are designed for gas golfs. Um, it seem and you know you lower your production costs and right. everything like that. I I am happy that they would want to differentiate. It looks like they took a golf. And a bolt and something else. I can't quite. Is it a Kona or something? I don't know if it's a leaf. It it's a something. I don't know. It, it's it's too flat faced for me. Yeah. I mean, that's just my own personal opinion. I'd like to see other people's opinions, though, because I, I mean, I yeah. can see how people would like it. So this is kind of big news, Jesse. Ford is dropping all but two of their cars from its North American dealerships. They're going to be dropping the Fiesta, the Taurus, the Fusion, and the regular Focus. They'll be gone from the U.S. and Canada. Why? Well... I think this, I've seen this before. American companies do this a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they have problems with the revenue numbers and they look at things, instead of thinking about how to innovate uh, their way out of the solution, they look at ways to cut. Mm -hmm. And so these are typically cars that don't have very good margins, your lower price cars. So they're just deciding, hey, let's just cut them out and go for things like pickup trucks, which have much higher margins and also go for things like SUVs that are more in demand. Mm -hmm. um, I think Ford's making a huge decision, and I'm going to predict it right here and right now. There's only two American car companies that have never gone bankrupt. That's Ford and Tesla. I think that Ford is going to be the next American car company to go bankrupt because if this is the way they're going to try and you know, fix their, their problem, they're pivoting in the wrong way. They know they need to pivot, but they're pivoting by just chopping things instead of trying to innovate. Um, so they've just announced that by 2020, almost 90% of the Ford portfolio in North America will be trucks, utilities, and commercial vehicles. Um, the company is also exploring new white space vehicle silhouettes that combine the best attributes of cars, and utilities, such as higher ride height, space, and versatility. Okay, wait, so, so what's a white space? Are those the, like a box truck? Uh, they're basically trying to invent new segments. I think they know that Americans like SUVs and crossovers and high ride heights, so they're probably going to be looking to come out with cars that fill those segments. But that's not what, what we need to be focusing on right now. We need to be focusing on electric and autonomous and things like that. And they're just focusing on, oh, how many cup holders do Americans like? Mm. I think that's a big mistake. And just to point out, they're not the only uh, car, big car company that's doing this. I mean, Fiat Chrysler already did away with their Dodge Dart and their Chrysler 200 about a year ago. Uh, General Motors has decided to scale back production of the Chevy Cruze, the Chevy Impala, the Buick LaCrosse, the Cadillac ATS, and CTS. So again, they're cutting back on things that aren't as profitable, but what are they introducing instead? Not, not much concept cars. <laughs> so I didn't know this, Jesse, but as of 2013, Russia controlled about half of the global commercial launch industry with its fleet of rockets. So launching satellites into the orbits and stuff like that, right? Right. Okay. Um, but get this. I think they're going to be basically muscled out of the rocket industry by a little company, a little startup uh, company you might have heard of. Was it a Blue Origin? 
No, it's SpaceX. Oh, of course. Yeah, so Russia's chief spaceflight official, Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin, has uh, said this little comment about SpaceX. He said, the share of launch vehicles is as small as 4% of the overall market of space services. And he said, the 4% stake isn't worth the effort to try to elbow Musk and China aside. So payloads manufacturing is where good money could be made. So what is he talking about 4%? That he's he's minimizing what what launch services actually is. I think he's making that number up. I think so too. I mean 4% it it used to be a much bigger yeah, number. Yeah, I mean the the launch market is worth about 5.5 billion dollars annually and basically Russia would be leaving over 2 billion of that on the table if they give this up. Right. And it's just because I think they can't really compete with the cost savings that that Elon can give with a reusable rocket. SpaceX has just announced that in 2020, uh, their rates are going to go up by 50%. Oh, no. So that means that they're no longer cheap anymore. Is that is that what you're saying? So let's take a look. Mm -hmm. um, SpaceX's launch price was considerably cheaper than their rivals. It was $152 million per mission versus $262 million per mission. Wow. So it was way cheap. And mm -hmm. now raising their rate is basically going to put them on par. In fact, it's still going to be cheaper than Boeing. Right. Um, and now NASA said that they actually saved $20 million per flight compared to when they used to launch their Atlas V rockets. Right. SpaceX's price increase is actually tied to a 30% increase in capacity that they're able to give to their customers. That's right. The Dragon cargo space is, has way more space in it. Right. So you can fit more experiments and people and supplies. Mm -hmm. So we report a lot about electric buses on this show, but there's it seems like a lot of places that are switching to electric buses, and the biggest place that is switching to electric buses is Hands down, China. Take a gander at some of these stats here. Mm -hmm. Guess how much fuel per day won't be needed this year because of electric buses going online. Like an Olympic-sized swimming pool? Yeah, it's, it's well, it's, I don't know how many barrels go into an Olympic swimming pool, but 279,000 barrels a day of fuel won't be needed this year. That's, a, I think that's more. Also, China added a London-sized electric bus fleet every five weeks to the planet. So a London-sized bus fleet every five weeks? Yeah. That's insane. This is a quote here from BYD's Isbrand Ho, who said that everyone was laughing at BYD for making a toy. And look now, everyone has one. Yeah. I mean, it was just a couple of years ago that basically everyone was like, we don't need electric buses. We'll just make more efficient diesel buses. Um, you know, and who cares anyway? Yeah, the entire city of Shenzhen, China, has switched to electric buses. That's 16,500 buses. To give you some idea of how hard that is to do, Berlin, which is half the land size of Shenzhen, has switched, guess how many of their buses? Uh, 8,000? Well, they only had 1,300 to start with, oh. and they only switched out five. Five? They have five electric buses. Wow. You know why China had to do this? Because every year in China... 1.6 million extra deaths were happening because of air pollution. 1.6 million deaths? Can you even wrap your head around that? Wait, and this so is according to Berkeley Earth. That's a lot of people. That's like 4,300 people a day. Yeah, that's 73 full busloads of people dying every day. That's a person every 20 seconds dying because of air pollution. So you can see now why they really wanted to switch to electric buses. Wow. So what is this footage we're seeing someone driving along a highway? So on the show, we talk a lot about accidents that happen in Teslas. Just oh, no. Is there an accident the news, that's going to happen? I'm, on the news, they always cover all of the Tesla accidents. So I don't want to see another accident. We're going to show you a not accident. This is an accident that didn't occur. Um, Wait, what just happened there? As you can see... Autopilot actually took over the wheel there. Wait, this is a Tesla on autopilot. Yep. And a truck is passing on the left. And, and it swerves into his lane. And then the autopilot took over? Yep. It was raining. It was nighttime. And autopilot basically saved this guy from an accident. You know, this exact same thing happened to us. Remember, we were driving home from New York in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. And a truck veered into our lane. And autopilot took over and did the exact same thing. Yeah. And you were like, whoa. And I was like, what? Because I was in the back seat, and I was like, I, I, "What?" And you were like, "Yeah, yeah. it it just Move saved the, the thing." Because the thing is, as a driver, you're not paying attention to a truck passing you. That's an everyday occurrence. You're not going to think anything of it. But when the truck starts to veer in front of you, you don't have much time to react. That's cool. Yeah. So anyway, that's an accident that didn't happen, and I, you can rest assured that you didn't see that story 
on the news. So if you take a ride in Lyft, which is the $11 billion ride hailing company, it's second only to Uber, something's going to be different next week. Um, are they going to give you like free hats or something? Nope. They're going to offset your carbon emissions. So they're going to basically buy carbon credits so that anytime you ride in a Lyft vehicle, you are not contributing to global warming. What? Yeah. That's awesome. How, okay, but how do they achieve this? They haven't given us a dollar figure, but they say that they're going to be buying the equivalent of planting tens of millions of trees or taking hundreds of thousands of cars off the road. And they say that they're going to be doing this not in some far off place, but money that's going to be spent in local markets near you, near the cities that you drive Lyft in to offset. Interesting. Well, I would be very interested to see what it is specifically because I don't know if I trust mumbo jumbo from a, a car handling service like Lyft, but... That is an excellent sentiment and an excellent statement to be putting forward. What we do know is, according to communications officer Scott Coriel, he said that they're going to be investing in a manufacturing emissions reduction project in Michigan, an oil recycling project in Ohio, and a wind energy farm in Oklahoma. Hmm. And these projects are verified under the American Carbon Registry Climate Action Reserve of Verified Carbon Standards. So... It's a third party thing. So, I mean, it's not mumbo jumbo. It seems okay. to be legit. All right. That seems to be pretty legit. So a Tesla owner in the UK was caught last year on video leaving the driver's seat and getting into the passenger seat while in autopilot. Well, that's... Wait, so he was ghost riding the whip? No, he was driving and then he got into the passenger seat while yeah, the car I mean, was that's, driving. That's like ghost riding the whip. Are you talking about a movie or something? What are you talking about? That's where you, um, you know, you put the car in neutral and then you like either climb on, onto the hood or you, uh, you open the door and you start walking Is next that what to these the car. Are doing? Yeah. That's Wait. like ghost riding the whip. Wait, without autopilot, you can get out of the car? What? Well, yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. Do people value their lives? What? Are, what? It's just to look cool. Oh, well, I don't think this guy was trying to look cool. I think he was trying to take a nap. Uh, basically, he was seen with his hands over his head, and it looked like he was just, like, relaxing. Anyway, he was caught eventually. People tracked him down. According to the Telegraph, he was given an 18-month suspension of license. He also has to do 100 hours of unpaid work, um, and he's got to pay 1,800 pounds in fines. Well, I mean, good, because that's really dumb what he did. I can't imagine I mean, what he did. I mean, this is in traffic. On, I mean, I mean, for, it's one thing if you're not paying attention and you have autopilot on, because at least the wheel and the pedals are right there. Right? I don't even think that's good. I mean, it's bad. That's bad. But at least, at the very least, if you, you know, look up and, and pay attention, uh, he was a chance. There's a chance that if you see something that you could grab the wheel right. and I do mean, something. He, the, he's or, in the passenger seat. He had to climb over right. to the passenger seat. He's on the M1, which is a major roadway in England. Right. And he's just like, what, going home? It seems like he must have done this every day then. I honestly, I do not understand what could possess you to do such an absolutely the, stupid thing. All right, it's time for the lightning round. The Boring Company just bought $400,000 worth of equipment from Tesla, according to SEC documents. Wow, four hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment. I think so, probably motors and stuff like that, and batteries would be my guess. So you, you're gonna bore through the just like take some Model Three motors and make a boring machine. I mean, that's kind of what they did with the semi. Maybe right? it's to power the boring machine. A bunch of batteries and yeah, motors and whatnot. Who knows? Yeah, maybe it's solar panels. Britain went more than two days without using coal power for the first time in a hundred and thirty-six years. Wow. What was 136 years ago and what happened? Uh, maybe they didn't use... They ran coal. out of maybe, coal that maybe day? Maybe they used... No, there was no coal <laughs> what burned was, What was 136 day? years ago? I don't know. If, 19, you, if you're an English history major... 1890s? Isn't that 1890s? What were they Maybe doing? it was a day when they just decided to not have electricity for a while. Okay. Don't know. All right. So this is the Sunflyer 2. It is an electric airplane. Um, it just took its maiden voyage the other day. So, so cool. Now there's multiple electric planes taken off here. Yeah. This is fantastic. So on the show, we talk a lot about wind power. And as of right now, it accounts for 4% of overall global energy supply, according to the International Energy Agency. That's surprising to me, but I'm so excited. That's and a lot. Of, it's that's a big percentage. Only going to go up from there. I can't wait for solar to catch up. Check out these Instagram posts from Tesla, which show that Tesla has racked up 7.2 billion miles driven. 10.3 billion kilowatt hours of solar produced, and 7.4 million tons of CO2 saved by Tesla products. 
And get this, that's two billion more miles since July of last year. Wow, that's less than a year. All right, so the dream case for Model X and Model 3 have just been announced. Um, it's available. And, and you can actually go get one. Yeah, we'll put the link below to Dreamcase. You remember we have uh, that for the Model S that we showed off, and now you can get it for your X and for your 3. Uh, the deliveries are for white during May, black during June, and then coming later this summer, gray and beige. The prices that have been announced are $549 for the Model 3 version, $579 for the Model X version. Um, and get this, the Model X version fits into that secret storage space in the back. Right. I think that is super fun. Obviously, yeah. this will only work for the uh, five-seater Model Xs, right. or the, the ones where all the seats fold down. Right. But all you Model 3 owners, now you got yourself a mobile bedroom. Yeah, and this includes the case, the mattress, the pillows, and the duvet. So yeah. it's, it's not like this is just a mattress. No, I can't it's wait till we get one set. to show you. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be really fun. Check this out. Did the uh, Brent Bobby? What, why didn't you? Uh, why did you mute the audio? I mean, doesn't everyone? No, no, want they to didn't. Hear? Mute, they didn't mute the audio. But then, why didn't we hear anything? That was listen, a Ferrari. Listen, listen at the end. Mm. Hear her voice. Okay, but what? Why wasn't it making any noise? It's a Ferrari. Doesn't it have a twelve-cylinder engine? No. But I mean, the guy who owns Ferrari said that if they ever made a Ferrari without the growl, it would be obscene. Yeah, he changed his mind. Wow, it's a hybrid. That was electric. That's really cool. Yes. So March was the best month ever for EV sales in Europe, ever. Take a look at this chart. Over 40,000 EV sales just in March alone. Wow. So if you look at the red line, that is for this year. And as you can see, that red line is topping any other previous year. And uh, it was the Renault Zoe and the Nissan Leaf that really pushed it over the top. Right. And this chart here shows how Europe is beating the U.S. in EV sales. This is really exciting because, I mean, the Zoe and the Leaf are still priced very similar to the Model 3. And since they're getting great sales numbers right now, you can only imagine once the Model 3 is actually available for people in Europe. Mm -hmm. We're so sorry, people in Europe who have to wait for the Model 3. I know. It is coming and it's going to be so exciting. I can't wait. So speaking of Teslas, this Australian limousine service called Evoke Limousine has become the first to clock more than 1 million kilometers on their Teslas. They started with just one Tesla in 2015. Now they have a fleet of eight vehicles. That means that they've traveled the equivalent of more than 25 laps around the earth. So three years, 40,000 passenger rides later, the company claims that not even one customer has been left stranded due to a failed battery. And the Port of Los Angeles has signed an agreement with uh, SpaceX for $1.38 million a year. SpaceX will be paying them to start building their rockets right there at the Port of LA. Wow, so that's where the rocket factory is going to go. Rocket, rocket factory. factory. Sounds so cool. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. This is from our friend John in England, who is driving on the M25 on solar energy alone. Hi, Zach and Jesse. It's John from the UK. We're going to do a special challenge where we're going to drive around the M25 on solar energy alone. So we've been charging the car all week on solar energy, and we're going to see if we can get around with what we've gained this week um, without needing to stop at a supercharger or anything like that. It's 99% green. It's been charging all week. So we're just about to join the M25, and the battery is on 83%. Total trip 139.5 miles, total kilowatt hours burnt 38.2, average 274 watt hours a mile, so pretty good. So uh, battery's on 29% and 10.04 is a return time. So we'll go and see how many kilowatt hours we generated uh, last week on green solar panel PV energy alone. There we can see that last week uh, we had 49.1 kilowatt hours generated, 95% on green. So just using that entirely, um, we've got around the M25, no problem. Awesome work, John. That was, wow, it took a lot of planning, a lot of time, 
thank you so much for for showing us that it can it can be done. That's right. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you're interested in those, go over to Patreon, and for as little as a buck a month, you'll be able to check out all of our Patreon bonus stories. And this week we have quite a few, so let's get get to work, Jess. All right, we are back from our Patreon bonus stories, and we want to give a special shout out to some of our wonderful Patreon contributors. Um, so let's just start this right off with Chris Davis, Anthony Battle, Walt Noble, Michael Cohen, Lars Hansen, Scott Charlton, Mark Hadley, and AJ Jose. Thank you so much, guys. You guys make this show possible. You know you do. And I just want to point out, you can get this awesome Now You Know mug if you go to Patreon, and uh, it's one of the cool perk levels. And also, Jesse and I are going to be doing a Patreon-only live stream on May 6th at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So go over to Patreon, figure out what perk level you want to join at, and you can join us for that. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweet of the Week. What do we got, Jesse? Um, so Elon says, oh, by the way, I'm building a cyborg dragon. No, what, what did Elon tweet this week? That's what he tweeted. He no. said, he said, oh, BTW, I'm building a cyborg dragon. That's what he said. That's what he tweeted in the tweet that he tweeted on Twitter. I don't know what it means. I, I would assume that he's building a cyborg dragon. I'm getting really scared right now. I'm not too I worried. Mean, I cyborg mean, and dragon are two words that should never go together, especially what? with the word what? building. What? Come on. Cyborg dragon, that's something you should see in a movie, not... Uh, so, did anyone respond to him? Yes. Um, so, Tyler Moore said, uh, about time. <laughs> and uh, Elon responded. He said, I know, it's such an underserved market. He's absolutely right. I mean... An underserved market? Yeah. Where's my cyborg dragon? I want to take it to work. Is this a little cyborg dragon? I don't know. Who cares? If he builds a giant cyborg dragon, he could take over the world. No, he couldn't. Uh, have dra- you seen Game of Thrones? Th- that's an that only ice took, dragon. That only took three dragons. Okay, she didn't take over. The, she hasn't even taken over Westeros yet, dude. Well, mm, I'm worried. Dude, I'm just saying. What's a cyborg? I mean, come on. All right, it's time for community mail time. Hopefully there's no cyborg dragons in here. Community mail time. This is from our friend Christian in Germany who has a YouTube channel. Now, it's in German, mm-hmm. Jesse, so we haven't been able to understand it, but it's called Strom Garage, which means current garage. Mm-hmm. And I think all of our German-speaking viewers in the world should go check it out. All right. This is our friend Michael's new Model S. He took delivery at the end of February at the Tesla store in Munich in Germany. Uh, he used our referral code, by the way. Nice. So we will be visiting him in the Tesla Roadster. Remember that if you use our referral code and you live in Europe, Canada, or the United States, we will be driving to your house in a Tesla Roadster and giving you a ride. So make sure you use that. And he took a road trip in this car and went all over the place. Uh, and then he drove through Monte Carlo and he got to drive the official Grand Prix racetrack in the Model S. Wow. Yeah. What was cool? his time? How did he do? Uh, he didn't say how he did, but he he basically people were taking pictures of him as he drove down the street and videos and he felt wow. like a star. So nice. That was pretty cool. Remember last week, Jesse, when we showed a photo of a newly converted Tesla Model S Ranger car? Uh, in the Chicago area. These are cars that Tesla uses to fix their fleet. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we'll take a look at this. This is a fleet of Tesla Ranger electric vehicles. Nice. I mean, it's so smart. You need an electric car to go fix an electric car, right? Yeah. I feel like there's some Model 3s in here. It's just so, there's so many of them, it's hard to see them all. All right, well, last week, Jesse, you asked our viewers if there was anyone from Puerto Rico who could tell us about uh, getting solar or power walls there. Well, this is our friend, Tawi Rodriguez from Puerto Rico. He's a proud owner of a Tesla Powerwall 2, and he's one of our Patreon followers. And he started watching our TTNs back at like, 22 so he's a real wow. real fan um on may of, of 2017 he installed an 18 solar panel system that generates 4.5 kilowatts he did it because in puerto rico the electricity bill is so high that it makes economic sense to make this change and help the environment so eight days after the hurricane um he convinced his mom to order a power wall from tesla because they had solar but that didn't help them with power outages. So with the battery installed, it took about four months to from ordering to getting it installed. Um, they finally have it installed and you can see right here, he's got all of his data from his um, app. So mm-hmm. he's showing us how much power they're making. Now the only time they know there's a power outage is when they hear their neighbor's generators turning on wow. because they keep having power through the power outage because of their power wall. And these are the consumption graphics. They're kind of addicting, he says, because you kind of keep wanting to watch them on your, <laughs> on your app. Um, and so he just wanted to share that story with you and our viewers that he's got a power wall and it's changed his life in puerto rico wow and it's 
really, I mean, if you're going to get a power wall, <laughs> Puerto Rico is right now is the best place to get to use it because they lose power so frequently. Yeah. So I just want to thank Towie so much for, for sharing your story with us. That's super cool that we were able to ask our viewers and and not only were you living in Puerto Rico, but you also have a power wall too. And it works. Like yeah. if you if you were wondering if it would work in Puerto Rico, there is your evidence. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Thank you so much. This is our friend Zach S. And he got his new blue Model 3. Do you think he's excited about it? Um, yeah. Yeah. And our friend Craig in St. Louis is showing off his new Model 3. It's also the blue one. And there's a couple others at the Car and Coffee St. Louis season kickoff at the Westport Plaza. I'm just so excited to start seeing more and more of these Model 3s coming in. You guys are getting your Model 3s. This is super exciting. Yeah. So for our Patreon viewer post this week, we asked who will play Elon in the Elon Musk movie 10 years from now? Yeah, we got comments like uh, Michael Fassbender. Yep. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, Elon himself. Mm -hmm. uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Chris Pratt. Tom Felton who played uh, Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies. Yep. Uh, Miles Teller, he was the drummer in Whiplash, mm -hmm. and Tom Cruise. But I feel like we're, we're forgetting really b better choices. Yeah. So, I mean, if you guys have uh, better ideas, uh, you can put them down in the comments down below. I'm trying to think of who I would want to play Elon. I, I just, I can't come up with anything. I know. I, I That's what I mean. Like, these are good choices, so but tough. I feel like there's like even better ones and we're just not thinking of it. Or right. I think there's some Game of Thrones actors that would be cool. Brent and Bobby, you're big Game of Thrones uh, fans. Put a couple of your favorite actors up here. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Peter Dinklage. Yeah. It, maybe? Maybe. I think he'd, he'd be great. I mean, Elon is six foot three or four, so I feel like you have to take that into account, but I don't know. I mean, I think Don Cheadle's a great actor, but I don't know if he could play Elon. That's the problem. I think he could. I think he'd play him pretty well. So every week we have people around the world send us video reviews of superchargers that are near them or ones that they visit. They don't send them to us, Jesse. That's true. They, they go upload to, them onto our website. And they've been so good at that. And our website's been working great. So shout out to Nick, our, our awesome programmer guru who mm -hmm. figured all that out um it's so exciting to go to the page and see all of them but what i need more of i need more destination charger reviews yeah. people so go to more of those because those i we're, we're lacking in yep. that department all right. all right let's show you some videos hey zach and jesse here we are in moab utah this is the off-road and biking capital of utah lots of trails got a four stall supercharger here works very well best western parking lot, lots of restaurants, because you're basically downtown here, lots of places to go. Hi Zach, hi Jesse. This is Naomi and I'm in San Bernardino, California. This is the Inland Center Mall next to the 215 freeway, where we have the new Tesla superchargers, the urban superchargers. Look, they're still wrapped up. Sorry, don't mind the ice cars, fossil fuel cars. But over there, that's the, the beauty right there. There's 12, one dozen more. Nice and shiny, pretty and new. All Tesla-y. And over here we have two more. These are exclusively for EV charging only. Tesla only charging. So we have two here, 12 there, 14 all together. The Inland Mall has all the stores that normal malls have. We've got the food court. We've got amenities that are nearby as well. So I would rate this place about mm, eight, nine, 10. 10. So there you have it, Zach and Jesse, for all you do and, and now you know. And these are the Inland Center Mall new urban superchargers, so now you know. Hi, Zach and Jesse. Welcome to the supercharger of Nivelle in Belgium. Nivelle is located 35 kilometers south of Brussels, so 22 miles. We arrive at the supercharger with a near-dead battery experience, with only one person remaining. It is an 8-stall supercharger and it is located on the Hotel Nivelle Sud parking. There is a mall at 6 minutes walking distance where you can do some shopping, have a lunch. You will find as well sweet pastries, wine and of course Belgian beers. 
Last week, Jesse, you asked for a high-end review. I'd forgotten that we'd gotten this one from our friend Chandler in Scottsdale, Arizona. Take a look at this. Hi, I'm JJ. And I'm Chandler. And this, this is, is Supercharger, Supercharger News from Scottsdale, Arizona. Arizona. This is a 16-stall in Scottsdale Quarter Mall with too many amenities to count, including Postino's, Five Guys, the Apple Store, Chipotle, a kid's park, and the best part is there's a Tesla store here. Huh? Whoa. Budding filmmaker there? <laughs> wow, that was awesome. Yeah, so see, ask and you shall receive. That's cool. Can um well what else should I ask for then? <laughs> um I don't know. It's gonna be tough to top that. If you could top that, by all means, try and do it. All right, let's talk about the new open superchargers in the world. What do we got, Jesse? A 14 stall urban supercharger at Sedona, Arizona. The four stall urban charger at West 75th Street in New York City. The four stall urban supercharger at East 47th Street, New York City. The six stall in Liangyangang, Sofitel, China. Number 207 in China, the six stall at Country Garden Phoenix Hot Spring Hotel in Taizhou, China. The 10 stall in Amaraz, Spain. Number 18 in Japan, the six stall at Nagoya, Japan. Number 16 in Switzerland, number 395 in Europe is the 10 stall in Melide, Switzerland, and our buddy Patrick has already reviewed it on our website. The 12 stall at Fremont Hub, Fremont, California. Yeah, that's a mall down the street from the uh, factory. Oh, perfect. And number 505 in the USA, number 1235 in the world is the 10 stall urban supercharger at Tucson, La Acantada Mall, Arizona. So you know that this is a podcast, Jesse, right? That you don't have to watch it on YouTube. You can listen as a podcast. You can do that. Did you know that when we started, we were getting about 20 listens a week. Mm -hmm. We're up to over 500 listens a week. That's great. Which is really exciting. So yeah, if you want to listen on Stitcher, iTunes, um, tune in you can listen to it in your tesla just go check out your favorite podcast place you'll probably find us and you can listen wherever you wherever you are at work in the car that's great and to everyone who's listening to this as a podcast what was that i, I gave the thumbs up oh oh they can't hear that they're they're listening oh <laughs> see you're used to video sorry Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We really appreciate everyone who subscribes to the channel. I know a lot of you don't click that button because you're like, I don't want to pay for anything. It's it, free. It's free. It's, you, that's free. And it's nice for us because it just raises that subscriber number up and that allows us to get more opportunities to interview people and to do fun things. So if you wouldn't mind hitting it, that would be fantastic. Yeah, and then they put, YouTube did this thing, this cool thing where they put a bell next to it, mm -hmm. which is like subscribing again. Oh. what? Well, well, then hit that too. <laughs> the reason, okay, it's like you click that and then you'll get like, then it'll tell you every time. Oh, so if you, if you don't want to know every time, then you don't have to click that. But do click the subscribe button. That's right. the important one. And also click the like button, the little thumbs up, because that lets other people know that they might like this video and it shares it. Maybe. And then we've no proof of and that. And then share whatsoever. it on your <laughs> social media. Yeah. I mean, tell your friends and family, put it on your playlist because that gets it out to more people. And again, that opens up more opportunities for us. We are interviewing a lot of cool people. I think mm -hmm. you're seeing that on our channel. We have some cool interviews coming up. We just did some cool interviews with some amazing people. So keep checking those up. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. Now you know. know.